Over the next five years, I want to build a culture of expectancy where new people are making commitments to Jesus, where they haven't done that before, and they come into a place where they see that it's normal, it's regular, it makes a difference for people. I want to build a culture of expectancy that new people are going to make new commitments to Jesus. About five or six years ago, a group of people in our church were really concerned about human trafficking. They were in a, a small group together. And they thought, what would it be like to create an organization that would disrupt the business model for people who were doing the trafficking of humans? They came to us and they asked, is there a way that we could help them create this organization? This is what I mean when we say good things grow here. This was not Restoration's idea. This was some people who were in our church who had this idea themselves. And they got really excited about it because good things grow here. When I think about the strengths that have really characterized our church over the past few years, one of them is our strong leadership culture. I love the fact that hundreds of people volunteer their time each week and each month. They look for different opportunities that we have and they say, yes, I want to be a part of this. And as we look into the next five years and the different good things that are going to grow here, we want to take this strong leadership culture and we want it to be even stronger. We want our volunteers to be well cared for, to have lots of opportunities to use their gifts. We also have people who have come through our church and felt like God is calling them into ordained ministry. We've had over 12 people enter the ordination process, go to seminary, think about how what God's doing in their life could actually be used in the church. It's incredible that these 12 people would grow up here and use their gifts for the, for the, for the growth of the church. I would like over the next five years for restoration to actually be a destination for people who are coming out of seminary and thinking about their first stop as an ordained person or someone who wants to work in a church. I want them to think about coming here first because this is where they could get trained and this is where they could grow up in this calling that they've been given. I would love for us to see seminarians coming during the summer and people taking their first job after seminary, what we call a curate, um, having them be here and learning how to be an ordained person, and then going off into the leadership that God has called them to in the world, because good things grow here. In the next five years, if we're gonna see 100 people make a new commitment to Jesus and be confirmed in front of their community or baptized and be an active member of our church, if that's gonna happen, one of the things that we will have to do as a congregation is tell our stories of transformation. It's great for me to be able to talk to you about what God's done in my life, but one of the gifts of being a part of a church like ours is that there are literally dozens and hundreds of stories of transformation sitting all around you. And it's okay sometimes to tell somebody else's story. Like, I would love for you to come to my church because can you believe what God did in this person's life whose friend I am? And I want us to know each other's stories, to know our story, to know God's story, the way He came for us and transformed us and changed us. Good things grow here. When I think about people whose lives have been transformed, this isn't my story, this is somebody else's story, but I know that there are people who live around me who have a real similar experience. So there was a guy who'd grown up around a church and one of his friends invited him to our church and he felt like it was kind of familiar to him, but he had never stood in front of a community and said, I want this for myself. I've been a part of it for a lot of my life, but I want to say this is for me. And so one Sunday he did, and we baptized him, and he became a kid's small group leader and really active in our church. And that story I think is true for a lot of people, where maybe they've grown up close to what's happening in a church, but they've never said, this is for me. And that story happens here a lot, and I wanna see it happen over and over and over again. There's another couple who came to our church because we were the closest church to them, and they hadn't been in church for a while, and 
They were wondering, maybe we should try church, and we were the church that happened to be closest. And as they came, they experienced the presence of God, they experienced people who were curious about their life, and they got plugged in and really active and really changed a lot because of what God was doing in their life. That's what we mean by good things grow here, is that when people come, God gets a hold of them and they become transformed and different. Over the last year, as our congregation has given lots of different ideas and input on what the next five years could look like at Restoration, there are four objectives that have emerged. One is that being a 10-year-old church, we have some strengths and we want those to keep getting stronger. We want to build on them and have them be a part of our life together. So we have strengths that we want to be stronger. Secondly, we want to grow disciples. We have a strong small group system that works very effectively in this area. And we want to use the strength of our small groups to actually teach different kinds of things and to reach different kinds of people. We want everyone who shows up on a Sunday to be in a small group during the week as much as possible because that's where they can learn the scriptures and be prayed for and get to know each other. We want to grow disciples. Thirdly, we want to serve our neighbors. And we are grateful that with the creation of Restoration Immigration Legal Aid, we have immigrant neighbors who come into our church each month. They come for help working through the, the immigration process, but they also bring with them lots of opportunities for us to serve them. And we want to do that even more. Perhaps we'll have a Spanish-speaking worship service that starts sometime in the next year or two. Fourthly, we want to reach new people. We look out at Ballston and the Orange Line Corridor, and we know that there are so many people who live near us who don't know how much God cares about them and loves them. And so we want to be really creative, really strategic. How do we create some environments where they can ask their valid and good questions? And how do we serve them so that they understand that Jesus cares about them? And how do we welcome them into our community in a way where they can grow up in a relationship with Jesus? When I think about the next five years, what animates my desire to, to be the rector of this church is the idea of people making new commitments to Jesus. I would love to see a hundred different adults come and say, I didn't know how much God loved me and I want to respond to that love by letting him lead my life, forgive me, and pull me into this community. I think it would be worth all of our most creative thinking and best strategy and most heartfelt love to see a hundred people make a new commitment to follow Jesus over the, last, over the, <laughs> over the next five years. I love getting to live in Arlington County. I love the people who live on my street and the folks who go to my kids' school, the people I get to ride bikes with and eat at District Taco with. Um, I love what, what's happening in our county. And one of the ways I want to love Arlington is to help our church be a part of 100 people who've never made a decision to follow Jesus make a decision to follow Jesus, to experience new life, and to be grafted into our community in a new way. I, I would love for a hundred people to make new commitments to Jesus, to see baptisms and confirmations of adults who are excited about this new life that they've experienced. Over the next five years, it is my hope and prayer that restoration will be a part of a hundred people making a new commitment to follow Jesus. That they would be confirmed or baptized and they would become a part of our church. Can you imagine a hundred adults coming in and saying, I want this life that Jesus came, he, that Jesus said he came to bring and to bring to the full. When, when I started the church, my whole desire in doing this was to see a bunch of my friends who live on my street come into a relationship with God. And then I hit the realities of starting a church, which is, will people come? Will we have enough money? Will we have a place to, to worship? And all of those are real practical things. They matter. 
And it's not that I lost that desire to see my friends have a relationship with Jesus, uh, but we got really busy making sure that Restoration Anglican Church got established, that we started a church. And now we have, we have a church. And, and I want us, I just, I want us to, to leverage everything we've got to see our friends come into a relationship with Jesus, to experience this amazing gift that we have here as a community. Um, I, there's days I just can't, there's days I can't believe that I get to be the pastor of our church, that I get to experience life with all of you. And, and I really want other people to get to experience that. I think Jesus is the hope of the world. And it would be great for hundreds of new people to experience that.